Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mark with My Front Range Living and yeah, it is that time, man. The time we've all been waiting for. We've kind of alluded to it all year long. We want to kind of see how this market plays out and just watch the numbers. And today we're going to talk about the Colorado Springs real estate market update for August of 2022. So, you know, if you're thinking about buying a house in Colorado Springs or, or you're moving to Colorado Springs or e even if you're just already living in Colorado Springs, this is some really intriguing information. It's been good to follow all this over the course of the last specifically four to five months because what started out in January, uh, continuing that really red hot market that we had in 2021, has definitely cooled off. As so yeah, as it, as it cools down a little bit, um, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. But so once again, as we do every, every month, uh, this is for the entirety of the Pikes Peak MLS, not just for Colorado Springs specifically, but obviously Colorado Springs is a big, big, huge part of the Pikes Peak MLS. So, so single family home sales, let's just dive right in here, right? So single family home sales in the Pikes Peak MLS, 1366, down 2.6% from uh, July uh, of 1403. Now get this, that's only down 27% from 1870 this same time last year. Folks, we were selling a ton more houses this time last year. That's not surprising to anybody. Average sales price. So if you're thinking about selling your home, this is a really interesting number to think about, okay? So uh, last month in July, it was $557,000 in August, the average sales price was 530.5. So we dropped about 4.8% month over month from July to August. But get this, year over year, we are up from 499 in August of 2021. That represents a 6.3% value increase. Now, if you have paid attention to our channel at all over the course of the last several years, that 6%, that's really the sweet spot. That 6 to 10% is where we should be uh, in, in a reasonable market. We can expect that home values will increase 6 to 10% year over year, and that's exactly what happened. So um, not too worked up about that. So let's dive into active homes. Active homes, of course, went up, right? As you can expect, this market stuff's sitting a little bit longer. So it went up from 25.51 in July to 26.39 here in August. Get this stat, folks. This one's huge. This time, August of 2021 last year, 1,009 homes were on the market. That's right. We're up 161.5% year over year to 2639. But let's think about this. So sales, right? We're at 1366 this month. So multiply that by six because we need six months worth of inventory. We're still not even at half of a normal inventory when it comes to single family homes here in the Pikes Peak MLS. More on that in a bit. We'll, we'll encapsulate all this as far as what we can see and what we can determine from these numbers. But, all right, so let's talk condos and townhomes, all right? Let's just dive right in. Sales, uh, they went up, oddly enough, from July to August, from 208 in July, 215 in August. Yeah, not a ton, seven units, but... Uh, from this time last year, way, way, way down. This time last year, August of 2021, 260 condos and townhomes were sold in this same month, year over year. Uh, but then average sales price, very, very similar to single family homes. They follow those trends. Went down from 374 in July to 361 in August. But again, if you're looking at year over year, uh, August of 2021, the average sales price was 339. So 6.4%. We're right in line. 6.3 on the single family side, 6.4 condos and townhomes. So the average sales price is still going up, which means it's a pretty, it's still a good time to be a seller because that value increase is still justifiable. It's there, no question. So active homes. Uh, there are fewer active homes, uh, 234. Uh, in July, and then we went down to 229. So just not as much building going on as my guess there. And then obviously, uh, active homes way up this time. Last year, August of 2021, there were only 106 condos and townhomes. Now there's 229. That represents a 116% increase year over year in active homes. But again, when you're talking about sales, uh, of 215, you got to multiply that by six. We're still not even halfway to what's considered a normal market. And again, remember, a normal market is if we don't put any more homes on the market and they're selling the way that they are, uh, we need six months worth of inventory. So uh, we need about 6,000 homes available uh, in the Pikes Peak MLS, and we're not even halfway there. So not too worked up in that space. But let's talk. 
if you uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you understand that the Fed is looking at hiking interest rates another three times. And we're recording this in early September this year. So another three times in the last quarter of 2022, they're looking at raising uh, Fed rates. Now, that does not directly impact mortgage rates. Obviously, it's a key indicator. But the reality of it is, it doesn't necessarily mean that mortgage rates are going to go up with the interest rates. That said, the Fed is clearly trying to uh, right the ship, if you will, as quickly as possible. They're not drawing out interest rate increases. They're just they're ripping the Band-Aid off is what, is, is what they're doing. And they're trying to make uh, the, the recession last for as short a period of time as they possibly can. I understand the idea that, hey, it's not a good time to buy, not, maybe not even be a good time to sell because of interest rates and yada, yada, yada. But I want to go back to the fact that year over year, even in a quote unquote down month, we're 6% year over year value increase in homes. Now, I understand that homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer than they typically have. I understand that. Over the last two or three years, yours truly, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. If it didn't sell in 24 hours, what's wrong, right? Well, now we're kind of settling down back to where we were pre-pandemic numbers. Let's just woe up. Anywhere between that 10 and 21 day mark, two and three weeks, if, if you remember, that was normal. That was average. That's how long a house should be on the market. So. From that standpoint, we're getting back to a normal, more, quite frankly, a more sustainable market at this stage. Now, again, if it's the right time for you, it's the right time for you. If it's not the right time for you, it's not the right time for you. But the point is, if you want to go out and you want to sell your home, uh, the opportunity is definitely there to uh, capitalize on some great values. And if you're a buyer, the opportunity is great because you're not fighting with 20,000 humans trying to get in the house at the same time and get into bidding wars. You can take your time, you can process. It's actually a really great time in our market. I never thought that just being normal <laughs> would be a great time in our market. But after the last two or three years, it's nice to step back, take a deep breath, and just kind of look at all the numbers and see where this is going to go out. The fact remains, there's still value to be had on both the sales side and the buy side. So while we're on the topic, right, we, we talk about is now a good time to buy or sell uh, the rental market, right? So 100% of the humans in North America need housing. That's not a secret. Those percentages are there. If you are in North America, you need housing. So the rental market is another key indicator for our housing market. And man, the rental market is still crazy, crazy tough here in Colorado Springs. Rents are actually increasing and uh, the amount of qualified candidates are out there too. So if you're not buying and you find yourself in a position of needing to rent right now, that's a really tough market as well. We, uh, we're familiar with some friends of ours uh, they went to rent their house. They had a townhome of theirs come available and they're like, hey, we got to rent it out. They had 35 inquiries in 24 hours. Less than like that's one inquiry per hour. They finally shut it off and they're like, man. And they were surprised because um, these these tenants were very, very well qualified and probably could have purchased. But maybe there's some fear in the, in the interest rates. I don't know what it is. But even the rental market is a great indicator for where the uh, housing market is going to go as well. Like, the investors are out there waiting and that is going to mean the rent is going up too, which is going to make the push for uh, purchasing a house that much greater, that, that, that much more important as well. Hey, as always, we hope you found value in today's content. It would mean the world if you went below, gave us a thumbs up on today's content and liked it. It would also mean the world if you click that sweet, sweet bell down there and subscribe to our channel. We're putting out content every single week to help you make Colorado Springs feel like home. Hey, if you're taking a look at the description of the video down there, you are going to notice that we have our relocation guide link. That is yours. If you are thinking about moving to Colorado Springs and you just want some more information about the area, you can click on that and get a little more information that might fit your criteria as you make that decision. A link to our website is also down there. So if you're thinking about moving and you, or you just want to look at houses, uh, our website has the capability to look at houses in real time. You can see listings that are available and that is uh, at myfrontrangeliving.com also in the description down there. Hey, if you want to compare numbers month over month, year over year, you can check out July's uh, market update right here and kind of give you an idea from July to August and all those numbers that go with it. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day.